Sham Sham, welcome to lecture 61. The title of this lecture Comparison between Prophet Ibrahim and Buddha. So, short introduction about Buddha. His name was Siddhartha Gautama Buddha. A young man named Sadratul Gautama Buddha was the crown prince of a great kingdom. He was enjoying an extravagant lifestyle and released all the pomp and glory in a person of his stature. Of his stature. However, he used to get very much disturbed by watching the clinical system in operation set by his father, the Maharaja, the king of that time. In consent with the priesthood, priesthood everywhere, whether in democracy, whether in capitalism, whether in dynastic system or royal system, because they are parasites causing havoc on the lives of the unfortunate commons. The reality and the partner in crime did not even consider them human beings like you know, Saudi Arabia or India or this or communist member or the political leader. They don't consider commoner as a human being and treated them like some kinds of insects. One night, he quietly left the palace and went away to a far-off place without even telling his wife where he was heading. In fact, he did not personally know where the fate would take him. But he was sure of one thing, he would never return that hellhole as long as he lived. So this was Javan and Kambang. This sounds good to hear that a crown prince gave up the life of a luxury and wealth for the sake of poor people suffering perpetually under ruthless regime. Nevertheless, he did not do anything of the sort. He just ran away from the miserable situation as he did not have the guts to take a stand against the cruel system and try to set things right. In fact, he selected the easiest way out. He just gave up his position as the crown prince, withdrew from the royalty and mingled up with the common people. However, this action on his part did not bring any relief to the people of the state. His state. On contrary, he put at risk the life of his loving wife and kid by leaving them on their own. So this is a crime. The same happened to relatives and all his old and trusted friends. He settled his course in search of Nirvana. Nirvana is in Hindi term, term in Sanskrit, peace a kind of personal mental leap. All these Nirvana people or Sufism or Vatar Vajud or Vatar Shuru, they are all sin. Or they are meant to die. And who never to return from the new found spot. This selfish attitude has realized over the century as an act of great courage and self-sacrifice. Token towards the monosystem. So this is the same thing. So Buddhism, Sufism, Vatra Vajud, monosystem, they are all the same. Yoga, all the same. They are a little bit different. So, so Buddhism is not only separate in India after this is movement. 
so people appreciate it. So it widely spread in India, but in also popular religion in Ceylon, Burma, Nepal, Finland, Central Asia, China, and Japan. Yoga, Dharma, Karma, and Yoga are the branches of the Buddhist religion. So they are saying, you know, just like Sufism, Vatra Vaju, Vatra Shuhu. So they are the same thing. There are 300 temples in Burma, along with a half a million monks and 75,000 nuns. In the verse, but the Quran doesn't accept this. Does not support this. In the verse 53, 38, 39, the Quran challenged Nirvana type of philosophy of life and informed every person is responsible, is responsible for his activities or deeds and he must still hard to have his share from the bounties of this plan. So all these Buddhism, Karma, Dharma, Sufism, and all other, you know, mysticism, they are a symbol of defeat, escapism. They are saying Muslim, Sufism, this world is a dog. So the Quran challenges and this social and sensible individual, man or woman, is entitled to receive that for which, for which he, she has strived for. And the compensation should be according to his quality of work. Look, this is a universal language. This rent is parasite. Any work where you are not working, you are not contributing, you are taking the money, it's a test. So the Quran blasted this. According to Buddha, this word is an inferno and the easiest way to get away from it. And all is give the worldly life and become a hermit. So all of us in our Punjab or in Sindh or in Karachi, you will find the Muslim army. You know, this Tibet, when China took the Tibet, so all these Buddhists who were begging, you know, the Lai, the Lai Lama ran away from there. So what China did, he developed the railway train in that area and he gave them the job, these sadhu or Buddhist who were not working, they are just naked feet without any proper dress, they were begging. So China gave them the job that you, all these Buddhists, they will maintain the railway line, give them job. And now they left. China did a very good job. So instead they were begging, now they are earning money. And government provides a facility. So this is the basic and the Buddhist atheist mysticism. So these are all the same thing. Yoga. If a person is a laborer, he is working hard, and when he will come at home, do you think he will do yoga? No. This exercise for the people, person. Now, if six billion people, the current population of the globe, go and live in jungles, for meditation, misery shall follow them over there, jeopardizing the ecosystem as the jungle will soon vanish. If everybody will go for meditation, 
Bağlı da bu da yani bu da bu da bu da bu Buddha's simplistic viewpoint as understood over the centuries is that the root cause of all kinds of troubles, pain and suffering in the world is due to the ambition of the people, due to your wish. This is the main, look, this is the main source of progress and they amount to kill it. Islamic mysticism, Sufism, Buddhism or Hinduism, they are all doing it. But they, they have all the money in their, in their churches, in their worship place. He blames desires, ideas and wishes to be at the core of all human problems. So this is his thing. This is the gist of the Buddha's philosophy or reality. Therefore, the best way to live a good life According to Buddha is to get away from at all, to do nothing except killing one one ambition and having a very modern life. So this is a brief introduction and his philosophy of Buddha. Now Ibrahim, Ibrahim faced much more dangerous and difficult situation as compared to Buddha. The kingdom of his times were symbols of injustice, cruelty, and misery, and he was not a son of king or any other. The Quran says Ibrahim was confronted with an extremely serious and perilous situation. The people for those rights he was fighting for feared the king and the gangs of the partner in the throne. Have to be delegated, you know, gangs, their partner. After four years, uh, the, the second party. They're all delegated leaders in all the country. They are working for the establishment. Behind them, there is a army and this. So, in verse two twenty. Six zero, the Quran gives the glimpse of the situation in which Ibrahim was, you know, in a horrible situation. The Quran informed that Ibrahim had a big problem on his hand as he was not finding a way to breathe a new life into the nation that was barely alive, objective like the situation of the current 2.6 million people. Billion Muslims, same situation. So then Ibrahim called his boss. He had the meeting with his boss. Quranic Federation boss. Was Kala Ibrahim a Rabbi, Rabbi, Arni, Kaifa, Tuhiyul Mauta? Kala Avalam Tomim, Kala Bala Avalakim. So this is the universe. I brought on these areas just to compare compare the what is the struggle of Ibrahim as compared to Buddha. So there, you know, translation, classical, Ibrahim, yes. When Ibrahim said, show me Lord, how you will raise the dead? He replied, have you no faith? He said, yes, but just to show, reassure my Heart. Allah said, take four birds, draw them to you, and cut their bodies to pieces, scatter them over the mountain tops, then call them back, they will come swiftly to you. Know the Allah will mighty This is the translation. How they corrupted the education of the Quran. 
the peace of the Lord translation. And when Ibrahim said, Why is God Ibrahim to his Jerusalem, his boss, his sustainer? I am at last. Show me how I can put the new life. How I can put Gaffa, dead nation, to visual Mata. How I will put the life, yeah, 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 Mata, this economic destruction, justice destruction, domestical destruction. How I can put the life? People are in a very bad condition. He said, you do not trust, do you have doubt about this command? So whatever we have given you by the Quran, you don't trust it? The boss said, that this dead nation cannot revive with new life? Do you not sure that you can bring with this, implementing this Quranic system? He said, absolutely. I trust about this, the effectiveness of this message. But to satisfy the reasoning of my mind, tell me how should do. Mine. I will give me guidance how I should do it. He said, hold a group of sympathetic people, Arba. Their translation. Arba four words. But here, Arba means go and check the lazy on. Sympathetic people. Sympathetic people. Tenderness. Crack them. They are very soft hearted. Make the group. Make the party. Arba. Arba means also. Rabi, you know the, the crops. Rabi, same from here. From high spirited, like free flying birds, are free thinking men who are sharp, liberal, and more vehemently fast like a hawk, mean thief. So, spread the, you make a party, paint them. You know the bird, it flies free. All the flying Species, whether mosquito, whether honeybee, or whether bird, they fly. So it's a metaphorical nation that those people who are not prejudiced, who are free thinking, they do not belong to any nationality or locality, local or caste or religion, spread these people, gather these people. Then tame or educate them precisely for this mission. This person, when you train a bird or sparrow, they come and sit on you. That is known as self. Just like the bird, you train them, you know, people train the bird. This is the way. To train them like that, give them the education of the Quran. Then Put the responsibility upon them. Summa ayala. Give the responsibility to blow out or take this message. Summa ayala. First of all, give them training, then give the responsibility. To all Jain leaders, like a mountain, not put the, put into, take the four birds and Cut them into slices, make the lenses and throw on the moon. Jabal means the, those leaders, like now, American leader, call it their Jabal. King Abdullah or Suleiman, their Jabal. And assign responsibility, each of them a portion or section of this mission, not cut into the pieces the bird, but men hunna. This is a divine from that group, from that party, from that which you, from your army. It's a collective noun, divine. 
men and men, women both were shot. Both were in, in, in his party. Moreover, when we shall summon them back for discussion or for strategy about the ongoing program, they should gather swiftly around you. Summa Adavana, then you call them. Kyatini Kasayan, immediately they should come to you. Moses calls. And understand that Allah's laws are lofty and powerful with the blend of reason. So when you implement this, these laws, lofty laws, based on reasoning, the society will be come up. So this is the meaning of this. This is the situation. Buddha was only facing the problem with that, the king. But here, whole group of communists, whole democratic leader, religious leader, kingdomship. However, unlike Buddha Ibrahim did not shun his responsibility, and run away in search of any individual tendency, tendency, leaving the innocent people to their arrest fate, he instead decided to take a stand against the all-powerful king and his virtual system of government. So he ran away. Whereas Ibrahim argument made the, made the argument with his boss. That is the reason in verse 3, 7, 1, 1, 11, the Quran gives very pertinent piece of information about Ibrahim's prosperity. Inna hu min abad al-mumineen, al-mumineen. Indeed, he was from those devotees who utilize their ability, look, mumineen, plural. So Ibrahim was not alone with the group, with his party, abilities, potentialities, energies, and resources. He put all these things together. Establish the peace and slowly of the land. So the Quran shortly summarized that he made the struggle and then he brought the peace and that struggle. Whereas Buddha, Buddha Rahman. And now I'll give you more important piece of information. Almost all messengers, beginning with Noah and going through Ibrahim, Lord, Job, Ayub, Johanna, Ismail, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Jesus, had to leave their places of birth and take a refuge or asylum somewhere else. In my book, I have given the detail of his life for self-preservation and avoid needless bloodshed. And Ibrahim also shifted. I end up in my previous lecture, I do that. He migrated to somewhere else. Hence, Ibrahim had to make infinite struggle and face life and death situation to achieve his objective of setting up a righteous social order, whereas Buddha did nothing to change the plight of the people and got away from it all in search of personal peace of mind. The Sufi life is for himself, but a right leader, his life for everyone. Sufi thinks about himself. Mysticism think about himself. However, this was the great, he was the first one to come up with the idea of building a chaplet. Buddha, it's a Buddha, Pershing Buddha, with worthless dried berries or spiritual beads. So this is a gift of the Buddha to all the religion, beating a bead. Dried berries. He invented this. 
he was atheist, Buddha. And he invent, invented this, you know, rosary, beads of rosary. Now all the religion, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, Christian, they are all good. East, Jews, Hindus, Christian, and Muslim should be thankful to the Buddha's worthless invention. It's a worthless. Now you are electronic beings now. If you go in any similar, they put one person outside the gate and the number of person entering is counting them by this electronic beings. In the rosary made in, is a symbol of defeat, escapism. The Jews started rotating rosary beads after experience crushing defeat and subjugation, firstly at the hand of Bakat Nasser. He defeated them, and at that time, Iran saved them. Iran gave them shelter, now they are against Iran. And secondly, by the army of Alexandria the Great. So when they were defeated, then they took this beads. When the follower of Jesus captured the dynamic message of the Islam by, by introducing the, their personal set of laws, resulting in the combination of a new book called the Bible, it's a fabrication, the original Bible. The first viral prescription was in Latin language. Invented the concept of Trinity. Then they adopted Buddha's rotten spiritualism along with the mediation and other stuff like beads and rosaries. So this is a, again how Christians are doing when they corrupted the education of the Isha Islam. And they created another sect. Actually, Jews, Jew, they created this both sect, Islam and Christianity. A similar situation developed when the Christian defeated the Muslim. The original message of Quran through the world remained the same in the hands of greedy and powerful, hungry Islamic priests to change into worthless shatter. They also looked. I think now every Muslim is doing, you know, counting the rosary. The introduction of Sufism in Islam promoted the Buddhist philosophy of doing nothing except going into the periods of meditation, counting beads, and performing other useless rituals which have nothing in common with the Quranic laws and energy. Ibrahim completed this impossible task successfully with patient wisdom, courage, and constant struggle. In recognition of this outstanding achievement, Allah declared Ibrahim to be the Imam leader of the whole humanity at that time until the end of time. And, in it, and Ibrahim was, according to the verse 1175, Ibrahim was a forbearing personality. Inna Ibrahim al-Halim al-Awwahu Mani. Surely Ibrahim was forbearance, wisdom, and sensible person, Halim, full of motive of affection, Awwahu, and make efforts like a honeybee, or like a salmon fish, salmon fish, or like a migrating bird. You know, this migrating bird, when they want, to rebuild the migrate. Honeybee, same thing. Again and again, you know, she collected the nectar and go back to her honeybee. Similarly, salmon fish, it swim against the water, thousand kilometers or five hundred water, where she was born. So she 
रीच डोर देर एंड हैच इज डोर देर सो दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ मनी सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन बुद्धा एंड इब्राहिम Thank you very much. And uh, next lecture, we will come back to our Arjan Numra. There are two, three lectures left.